OK, we'll make a start. So um, my name's Don Davis, and uh, I'm aware that I'm a, a relatively unknown figure at the Association of Magic and Metamagic Users, um, mainly because I use dark magic. <laughs> I could work on the premise that you would bother to Google who I was, uh, in which case you already know who I am, or that you're not going to bother to Google who I am, in which case I can tell you anything. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to speed up things, and I'm just going to go over all the things that are relevant for this particular talk. I'll give you the long line of accolades to do with security. So uh, here we have every interaction, every bit of code, uh, every bit of theory that I've contributed to in the field of cryptography. And here we have the vast array of cryptographic, uh, stenographic, and security fields that I am well versed in. And here is my long list of authoritative talks I have given on the subject. So I'm not an expert, but that's possibly a good thing, because uh, quite frankly, we've had enough of experts. <laughs> For the next 15 minutes, I am the people, and I am going under the pseudonym of William. Pause for laughter. Will of the people? Anyone? OK. Moving swiftly on. Um, so uh, in the world of security uh, and cryptography, there are generally uh, two types of people. Uh, there are those who don't know enough about uh, security and should not be writing their own cryptographic algorithms. And there are those who do know enough about security and know that they shouldn't be writing their own cryptographic algorithms. Um, there's also technically a third group of people. Um, these are the people who know enough about security that they could write their own cryptographic algorithms, but they're a bit of a statistical anomaly. Interestingly enough, statistical anomalies are probably what's going to cause your cryptographic algorithm to fail. Um, now, the too long didn't read version of, of this talk could well have been uh, used B-Grid. And there's an ex excellent article by, uh, by Coda Hill on uh, storing passwords. And the introductory paragraph is, uh, is quite informative. Um, <laughs> some things up very, very nicely. But in case you haven't quite got the cut and thrust, it too comes with a very handy too long didn't read. Um, but I'm going to assume that you're an audience of my peers and that none of you are doing something stupid like MD5 salting and, uh, and hashing the password and that none of you are storing them in plain text. But this isn't that talk. This is actually a talk about my Amazon wish list. This is a modern graphics card. Specifically, this is the uh, MSI NVIDIA 1080 Ti with a closed loop water cooling block. Um, for the purposes of this talk, the water cooling block isn't really important. I just want one. But you can overclock this card really quite heavily with one of those. <laughs> now, at 900 quid, I know this isn't the cheapest of things in the world. But the point here is this consumer level hardware. It's also a massively parallel supercomputer, one that makes using MD5 hashes very similar to using just plain text. It's a password. It's, it's such an innocuous little word, and one that predates computing by a long way. They're also uh, essentially a solved problem, um, which is uh, weird because uh, we seem to reject the solution and uh, go along with our own beliefs without actually knowing why, which seems to be a problem of late. And so a password is, is, is a method of, of authenticating ourselves, uh, of saying, I am who I claim to be. So the login dialogue is basically a challenge. Who are you? And then prove that you are that person. Uh, so my proof should be something that is, that is uniquely mine, that, that I and I alone know, which we as programmers then go and make as fundamentally difficult as possible. And there's, there's an XKCD about this. I mean, there's an XKCD about everything. Um, but you know, this, this is not an uncommon problem. We know about it. We joke about it. Um, uh, incidentally, the, uh, the correct horse battery uh, uh, password is now deemed unsafe because it's effectively a dictionary word. It is included in the lookup dictionaries that, that crackers uh, use. <laughs> but we've trained ourselves to think that, that this is uh, a good password. And in order to ensure that our users are using good passwords, we come up with rules that we must adhere to. Rules that actually make it harder to produce a good password. It doesn't help that the word password is a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, it implies a single real word that you somehow obfuscate to make uh, difficult to, 
to do a lookup attack on. Um, and despite us telling people, don't use a dictionary word, it's what people tend to do. So we use real words for our passwords, like password, which is a surprisingly common password. Um, and then we decide, well, we need to make rules to stop this. Uh, so it must be eight characters long, a length with origins that are lost in the annals of time, um, and the security of an eight-power password is, is questionable at, at, at best. Um, except that password is already eight characters long. Great. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll force you to have at least one uppercase character. Great, gotcha. Done that. Um, okay, you've got to put a number in there as well. Fine. Now we have moved to a nine-character password. It is slightly more secure. But we still haven't done uh, a huge amount, so we're going to make you use a special character. Now, I'm not going to stretch to a ten-character password here. I'm going to do it like this. Um, let's assume that I'm not going to be deliberately obtuse. Uh, let's assume that I'm going to pick a nice, random eight-character password. Um, and I'm going to use a standard keyboard for this. Now, Google tells me that a standard keyboard has 96 unique characters. So this means I've got 96 to the 8 different combinations that, that I can come up with with a truly random password, uh, which is of the order of, of, of 10 to the 16. Now, I'm aware that humans are really not good at dealing with, with big numbers. You know, what is 10 to the 16? So I thought I'd Google and come up with some way of visualizing uh, 10 to the 16. And Google came up with this. Uh, and I have others, other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them, and also they must listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. John 10, 16. You can see what Google did there. Um, anyway, what happens if we apply our password rules? We need to have one uppercase and one lowercase character. That's 26 to the 2. Uh, we need one number, so that's 10. Uh, one from the others, which is uh, 34. And then uh, four that we can pick from the full set of 90, uh, 96. Now, I, I, last night was a bit of a late night. You're probably still a bit tired, so I've done the maths for you. Um, 10 to the 13, order of magnitude. That's three orders of magnitude lower than our previous password. John 10 to the 13, 10 to the 10 13. Now, if you squint, maybe you can make that relevant. I don't know. Um, Anyway, the point is that the password that we first had, which would have taken over 600,000 years on our 1080 tie, can now be done in under 2,000 years. If Jesus had one of these, he now has your password. <laughs> oh, but sorry, you can't use spaces in your password for reasons I have never, ever understood. Um, so now we've reduced the problem space to something that only takes 400 years. Um, and this is assuming you're using bcrypt with MD5, you're talking 12 hours. Um, and these ludicrous rules, they create another problem. Um, I use a password manager for my passwords, and I get it to generate easy to type, easy to remember passwords, which are basically words concatenated with a, with a dash. Now, okay, the character set is a lot smaller um, and a lot more limited, but if I use five words with five characters and do a, a naive calculation as to how many combinations there are, um, what, does, what does this give me? It gives me 10 to the 35 combinations. That's many, many orders of magnitude greater. And scripture cannot be broken. Nor can this password, not easily. Um, and yet I can't use it because it's deemed unsafe. Because I have not used an uppercase character, and I have not used a number. What? The actual fudge cake. So something that my password manager will generate, and I generated this from my password manager, um, this is the order 10 to the 40 combinations that it, 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 it could come from. Um, but I can't use it because a developer somewhere has decided that this is not a safe password. John 10.40. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptized at first, and there he remained. No, there he did not remain. He wanted to log in. He wanted to sign up. <laughs> so he fudged his password. And he made it hoop compliant. And it's rejected because it's too long. Let's just think about that for a second. His password is too long. Now, if you don't understand why this is a, a, a problem, we, we can demestrate it. Um, this is, for, for those who don't understand, I told you did dark magic. Um, what we're doing here, a little command line program. Uh, we're importing bcrypt because we want bcrypt. We're defining our password to be A, which is a bad password. Um, and then we're, we're hashing it, passing it through bcrypt, and printing out the length of what comes out. Um, and the output of this program is 60. Run A through bcrypt, you get a 60. Um, Bytes, uh, byte rate coming out. 
same code. We're going to use uh, Randall's uh, Troubadour password. And we, we run our code on it, and it outputs 60. It's a byte array of 60, 60 bytes. Uh, correct horse battery staple, 60. You can see where this is going. Uh, so this code is, is, is a little bit uh, more different, because we're, we're, getting, we're getting stupid here. Uh, the, the, the file takes the contents of War and Peace from the Gutenberg project, so it's not just the War and Peace, it's the copyright statement and everything else, the whole thing. Uh, to prove that we're reading it, we're, we're, we're printing out how long the thing is, and then we're outputting the length of the bcrypted password hash. Uh, no prizes for guessing that it's big number, 60. So what does this tell us? If we're using a relational database, our password for our column is a char 60. Length has nothing to do with your password. Aha, say some people. But maybe it's computationally expensive, so we can have a, a DOS attack. Uh, but thankfully, Go makes this easy to check. We can, we can run benchmark tests uh, and see if this is a real concern. Mm, not so much. Um, in fact, the only thing I can see that should limit password length is the HTTP post limit, which is kind of variable depending on where, where you go, but it's almost certainly big enough to allow a, uh, a, a few thousand characters. So what's going on here? Um, now, as we've established, I'm not a cryptographic, uh, cryptographic expert, um, but I can only see three reasons for this happening. Either you're storing passwords as a plain text, in which place, please seek alternative employment. Or you're encrypting the password, which means you don't really understand how passwords work, which is worrying, please go seek training. Um, or you simply don't understand what's happening on the back end, and you need to get your teams to talk. Please improve team communication. Our understanding of passwords has been passed down like a cargo cult. It's this unbroken chain from some hitherto un, uh, unremembered uh, time, uh, and it's wrong. There's a recent article that's come out uh, from the National Institute of, uh, of Standards and Technology in the US, which is actually revamping what we think about passwords, and it's great. It says, uh, no more periodic password changes. They're bad. They have stats to prove this. Um, the only rule should be, uh, should be length on passwords. And the whole idea that eight characters is, is adequate just needs to, needs to go. Um, and with no hoops to jump through, I can start using words and phrases and punctuation if I want to. This is where we catch the poor passwords. You validate them. Do exactly what the bad guys would do. Compare them against a long list of known, frequently used passwords. And a cursory Google came up with the top 10,000 passwords. I'm sure if you spent slightly longer, you could come up with longer lists. Um, check the passphrase against a bunch of dictionaries as well. Jobs good. And there's one more thing that I would do. Stop calling them passwords. Start calling them passphrases. It shifts the mindset. And for love of all that is good and holy in this world, please let me use passphrases like this. Because if I can't, then I wish pain upon you. And that is bad. And it's just upsetting for everyone. And if you must make me use passwords like this, then I beg of you, let me paste into the password box. Because try <laughs> typing this on an iPhone keyboard where you have to bounce from your application to your security manager, log in, remember the next few things, bounce back between the passwords. At this point, it's not just you I want to hurt. It's your family as well. <laughs> so it's either that or I use this as a password. And it's just not helping. So with that, I'm going to open the floor to questions. But um, I want high quality questions. So your questions <laughs> must follow these rules. Thank you very much. <laughs>